I bet majority of y'all are all here for different reasons. Some of y'all caught wind of the punch brand from hearing me rap, seeing me perform, even know about the songwriting, seeing me interview legends and legends and even more legends. Some know me from tour. Some know me from working the festival circuit. Others know me as a celebrity DJ. When I got leverage, I made sure I brought up new artists to the platform. I use my powers for good. Some call me the plug to the net. I make sure I was that bridge for the new guys. I've met a lot of people in this culture. Some extremely successful in their lane. Others even iconic. I've sat in every single seat that this game has to offer. And with that said, comes a new perspective. A different perception of everything that we've always known. The most authentic vantage point you've ever heard. In that breath, I present to you the Truth Hurts Podcast. You're welcome. Ah, uh, man, you already know what it is, man. It's that boy Punch. Uh, I've been gone for a while, and I just think that it was, uh, um, I think it was needed for me to kind of just stand back for a moment and take a break and um, just kind of watch. You know what I mean? You can only be as valuable as you are to the culture once you absorb, you know, kind of what's going on. And I just felt like so much things was happening at once. I want to ease up. So we back, though. It's the True First Podcast. If you are unfamiliar, it's nice. Welcome. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. But um, we here, episode four. And, you know, we just going to dive into things. It's 2018. It's, it's the top of the year. And so many things are happening. I mean, so many. One of the biggest things that's happening um, for the year that I've noticed is probably, like, one of my biggest issues is talent um rushing their relationships you know um through the holiday season i'm outside i'm shopping i'm going to the stores i'm outside i'm tangible and people are like yo i need an interview yo i need to meet you yo put me on yo and i just don't understand why so many um talents that you know that are from the city and just who i bump into feel like this process is something that should be skipped it's probably the most unhealthy thing to possibly do to an artist, in my opinion. You as a brand, you as a company, if you jump, if you jump one of those key steps, you will crash. Like, it's inevitable. It's impossible for you to uh, circumvent uh, this process. You know, when we stand back and we look at it, let's take one of these one-hit wonders. You know, one of these guys who had something cool about them that went viral. How long were they really around? And the reality is, is that they weren't here long enough to build up their foundation. So what happens is, is that, let's look at it like this. If you get a hit record or your company just bursts and, and, and immediately starts selling, you shoot straight up, right? It's like, you're amazing. You're, if you look at your chart, the January month, February month, March month, then you shoot straight up in April. Fantastic, right? But there's no foundation. So if... If, like, anything goes wrong, bad publicity, bad press, uh, any type of kickback of your product to whatever you see, your company usually can't handle that, that type of backlash because you didn't create the foundation. See, putting out a song that's whack, putting out a t-shirt that's corny, uh, I have no idea, doing someone's hair, like, doing someone's hair terribly, fucking up a haircut, all of that is so needed in your process a growth. Because without the mistakes, how do you really make proper corrections? See, on this podcast, you know, I, I like a lot of people always say, you know, I'm yelling at people and I'm so harsh and I'm so cold. And, you know, I really hate it because I'm worse than that. You know, <laughs> like I want you all to understand. I hate I hate people who quit. I hate people who fuck up. You know, like at the end of the day, this whole thing in life is about, you know, not people who fuck up. I just hate people who quit and, like, just don't do enough. You know what I mean? I hate that uh, three months down the line in your career, you could legitimately look at um, some of your counterparts and just say, yo, I didn't try hard enough because I don't understand these emotions. I don't understand what it's like to just put up, you know, half of a game and sit on the bench for the other half. I don't get it. You know, I'm always about getting on that court, putting in that pain. I pull back. Talent. When you meet people, you got the opportunity. It's all good to take your shot. 
But make sure you're taking a realistic one. Don't just approach someone like me. I put in so much energy and so much hours and years, I mean, into this culture. It's unbelievable. So many people go, yo, Punch, yo, you control hip-hop for all young New York. And, you know, arguably, it might be true. I don't run from power and I don't run from, from what the masses are saying that I am. I don't run from that. I embrace that. Because if someone doesn't grab that leadership role, I don't know where our city's going to be. Because in the past couple years, we didn't have that. That voice wasn't there. And I don't like where my city was a couple years ago. So you know what? If, 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 if my city, my counterparts, my peers, my artists have voted me to be in that position, I'll gladly take that seat. With that being said, you got to remember who I am. If I got the power to just green light you, do you want your first shot with me to be one that you can't make? Let's think about that for a minute. If you was an athlete, young, and, and you knew that you got a, a phone call for UNC or Duke on the line, you got the direct line, yo, I could call UNC scout, come up here right now. Do you call them when you're out of shape? Do you dial that number when your jump is not falling, fresh off injury, i.e. some of you rappers fresh off not recording? Fresh off of song that didn't do too well? Do you ask for that look? No. That would be stupid. So sometimes I look at some of y'all as stupid. See, I'm human. I'm not going to give everybody 30, 40 chances. If I meet you once, that might be your only opportunity to cross paths. It might be that perfect moment. But make sure you take the right shot. And if that shot is, hey, Punch, my name is Bob Bop. I plan on emailing you in two or three weeks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to email you later today my Instagram. I just want you to be familiar with my face. I'll send you some records in a couple of weeks. Then do that. But don't be the artist with three songs like, yo, bro, I need an interview. My nigga put off me. I'm nice. You know, I'm about to put out my music. I'm about to start recording. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. It won't get you anywhere. And this just isn't about the music. This is about just branding. It's about life. See, be patient with your brand. I repeat. See, the truth hurts. Some of my friends, um, they're amazing. I love my team. I love some of my counterparts. But, you know, some of my friends, we all got friends that's like, you know, delusional. You got that guy who might not be in the best shape of his life. Not physically. I'm talking about mentally, financially, everything. And they out here shooting... For, for, for one of these quarter million follower girls. Like, bro, patience with your brand. That's not your look. You know what I mean? Like, I all get it. We all human. Like, oh, she's regular. I get it. But I don't. Because they're not regular. Because, you know, with me, you got to start getting picky about who you invest your time with. It's not just about who looks good, who doesn't. Sometimes it's attractive to know that woman is worth this amount of money. That woman puts in this amount of effort. That woman um, uh, is focused on her brand, her company so well that she's elevated. You could be attracted to the grind, to the hustle, to the, to the growth, to that hunger that that female or that male, for my counterparts, you know, had to possess to get into such a great position. That's half of the attraction. I think sometimes we forget. Humans, we go... Like, what a celebrity really is. And when we celebritize people, you know, they always diss the model, saying that they don't have talent. And that's all cool. But talent is different than being a celebrity. And y'all always forget that. Because there are tons and tons and tons and endless names of talented artists who never get the shot because their celebrity wasn't high enough. So I'll pull back. Celebrities and people who get celebritized the reason that they do that is because they do things so often that a normal person feels nearly amazing. So an actor might play a role so perfectly that you stand back and go, how the hell did they just bring that part across so well? Then they do it again and they do it again. Then all of a sudden, that's a superstar actor. We've all hit a three-pointer in our life, but the difference is Steph Curry does it with seven footers in front of him, and he does it 25 out of 30 times. So it's not that you can hit the shot, it's that he can hit the shot 25 out of 30 times. I'm just calling out a percentage. With all of this being said, I want some of my peers to respect the celebrity more. Just understand that those people got into that position for a reason. Those people got into a position of power and of allure 
to where the masses now look at them as something special. That they've done something amazing that a normal person wouldn't have been able to achieve. Let's, let, let's take that in better. Because I believe that if us as a mass would take it in better to value celebrities, we would understand our personal level better. Too many times like people are like, yo, celebrities regular. I'm going to talk to them like they regular. And that's bullshit. If y'all niggas meet Jay-Z, you better not talk to him like that's your homeboy. Yo, what it look like, my nigga, what's up? No. <laughs> Respect that man. Respect his growth. Respect where he's positioned himself in life, in business, in, um, in politics, in wealth, just in his own art. Like, it's amazing, and we got to get to the point of celebrating more. And don't confuse celebrating for this common word called dick riding. See, this is something else I want to tap on. So many people and artists with fake friends. Yes, artists with your fake friends. The ones who tell you that they're going to be with you. The ones who never really give you the bread for your studio. The ones who never invest in when you put out your t-shirt line. The ones who will pay to go see a huge artist and won't help you design a show. The fake friends. The ones who look at all your videos, will call you, laugh about it, but won't take 0.2 seconds to drop a flame or something under it. Those fake friends. So many times I hear people say, yo, I just can't keep posting my man. I'm not dick riding. I don't want to support my homegirl dresses all the time. I mean, that's my sis, but I ain't dick riding. Why must the hate surpass so much to where that we allow bullshit to be reality? The truth hurts. The only people dick riding is the people saying they ain't dick riding. Y'all are the motherfuckers that go on the, a celebrity page and stalk them and watch and go, oh, look what's up. Oh, Rihanna wore this. Oh, that. But your homegirl is working her fucking ass off trying to get her clothing line off the floor and you won't support it because of fear of dick riding. Y'all are the fucked up people. Y'all are the people that are so fucking scared, so scared that your friend can surpass where you are that you refuse to support it. You're so fearful that that little post... That, that, that one moment that you decide to go, yo, look, everybody, all my followers, look at my friend right here doing what they do. You feel like that moment will make you look bad? Well, you need to check your pride. Because if that's really your friend, if that's really your partner, then that should be, a, that should be an easy move for you. Truth hurts, man. A lot of these artists and talents will not get off the ground without some type of support. Nowadays, 2018, it feels like there's no hope without a fan base. There's no hope without views because it's so easy to do what we do. I want to tap on that. All the sometimes, punch, what's up? Why are you only bringing up people with views? Why are you only helping people with views? And I want to tap on that. I'm not only helping people with views, but I got to use some type of skimming system to go through 80,000 rappers. See, if I was a doctor and everybody wants to get into the hospital, I'd go through resumes, correct? And then um, I'd go through their resumes, which would be like a piece of paper with their accomplishments, correct? And then that would then tell me about how good they are at their job, correct? Yeah, so that's amazing. Then I'd have proof of how good they are. But in rap and in art, it's all subjective. And with that shit being clear, how the fuck can I go through 80,000 fucking resumes a day? I got to comb through this process somehow. Shoot me if I start with views. Shoot me if I start with followers. An inference to possibly letting me know how many people give a shit about that person. An assumption how many people enjoyed that song. How many people... Because in reality like this, listen, I'm an artist. I've done every single angle of this music shit you can possibly do. And I look at it very simply. If something was really good, and I mean hands down really good, someone else would have just took it on their own to be like, yo, <laughs> you heard this good shit because you need to hear it. And someone else, it, when it's amazing, it's amazing. Now, there are some records and moments and brands and looks that do need assistance, and they do become just as big of a hit and just as big of a success as we originally thought it would be. There are. And that's a lot of the culture. Let me not confuse nothing. 
But, but, if there really is something really good, the word will get out if you put enough pain in. Or, if you invest enough, truth hurts. I said this on one of my, this video probably got reposted more than, you know, 100, 200 times. How do some of you rappers have Louis and Gucci and still haven't been in a professional studio? How do you rappers own jewelry and don't have a car? You know, like, how do some of you guys have a car and still live in your mom's crib? I'm confused. You're not investing in yourself. It seems like they're investing in an image that they feel like the world wants to see. That won't get you very far. I got to laugh at this because this is unbelievable to me. I literally know people that will literally have the biggest Cuban on in the world and they tiptoe into their bedroom because mom dukes can't wake up. See, this ain't joking people that live with their mom. We all live with our mother. We all lived with a family member that needed to support us. But don't jump a step. I said this earlier. Don't skip a step trying to be something because the gap is going to be obvious. How can you own $20,000 worth of jewelry and live in an 8 by 12 room? It's confusing. You're only tricking the people that don't know better. They can't do much for you. A like in a view hasn't equated to dollars yet. I don't know if maybe y'all know something that I didn't. They wish, you know, an Instagram like would be Bitcoin. Like, one Instagram like equals da da da. Because let me tell you something. A million Instagram like equals, hold on, I wish I had my calculator. I think it equals zero, the same exact way that one like equals. Fuck are we doing this for? What's the point? Is the charade and the facade worth more than reality? You only fool the people that can't tell. You only impact the reality of people that don't have power. <laughs> you think rich people like are a lord when you like talk to a stack of bread? Like, let's be real for a moment. Rappers do that because they get paid stacks of bread. So like, if you're like a random nigga in the hood, you got a stack of bread, it's like, it's, it's just, it doesn't really add up very far. Because then any intelligent person with money will go, all right, cool, let's start the business because I know that that guy with the stack of money, y'all know him. I want you to think of your man right now who does this stack of money, right? And think about, yo, his man does rap and his homegirl does hair and his other homegirl does nails and his other man um, is a contractor and you didn't invest none of this big stack of money that you want to talk to in none of those businesses because cash, it acquires so much interest in your hand. Crazy, right? I know. Like, this is the kind of shit that they love to repost. They like when I talk hot. Because when I talk hot, people understand. It hurts people. It hurts feelings. I like when I hurt a feeling. That means I'm tapping on the nerve properly. I need y'all to do better. I want my city to be in better position. Because it just seems like if you're not doing some hot boy shit on the internet, then there's only one other way to go. And that seems to be the new trend nowadays. Rap beef. Guys, 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 guys. 50 Cent told me one time, you might have heard of him, he's a very popular guy. Um, you know, 50 said, yo, punch, man. When I was beefing with everybody, that shit was a lot of motherfucking headache. Police up my ass every single time you turn. Police over here. Every single time you turn, radio station, nah, we can't do that. Z unit gonna be here, they gonna come with this. You go to a club, extra security police. Nobody wants that. I guarantee you, 50 likes to travel more now than 15 years ago. Because you don't gotta worry about every single time a lieutenant, hey, what's going on? Pulling over every single car. I spoke to Yale the other day. Y'all don't even understand. He talking about your punch. We used to get pulled over every two seconds. When you on that target list, you on that target list. So I start to get confused and I go, well, Fifth has said this. Yale has said it. I know for a fact Cam has said it. So many artists have said that rap beef isn't really that good. I'm confused at why my younger counterparts are knee deep in rap beef. Or, let me correct, they're near deep in rap beef, possibly. What's all of this about? Is the clout worth the hassle? Is the subliminals worth 
getting pulled over is is it all worth it we all know that answer fans news platforms especially media outlets especially y'all are the ones driving all of this shit so if i go up here and i say yo fuck it goes right we know but what we got to understand is that as a power and as like a dope outlet in this culture, we got to understand that what we do really impacts things. I've seen so many media outlets repost things that they knew nothing about. <laughs> like, it's unbelievable. I've literally seen, I've seen outlets make stories about things that they had no representative there for. But yet headline, boom, boom, boom. Fights here. Yeah, gunshot. You get what I'm saying? It's unbelievable to me. But yet no rep from your team was there. But it's so fucking important to throw that post up. You know what I'm saying? Be popping. Get your post lit. I feel you. But you killing niggas. All of that bullshit is destroying. The streets love a nigga because I'm outside. I'm not like you media outlets that hide behind the phone that we still don't know who's the face. I'm punch. You know who I am. You know what I represent. I'm not even moving hot out here. It's cool to be tangible. It's cool for artists to be like, yo, bro, what's up? Let me know. It's cool. I'm not one of these invincible guys. I know what it is. We human. But as being somebody that's outside, it disgusts me when I see some of my media outlets and some of my peers do the bird shit they do just for likes and comments. You think that we don't know that when you don't know what the fuck to write and you just write a question like, hey, what do y'all think? That means I didn't know what the fuck to do, but I still need clout to post about it. So somebody say something. It's bullshit. Going to the block, yo, bro, you heard about so-and-so doing the thing with so-and-so? Nah, bro, what are you talking about? Who's so-and-so? I don't know. You ain't see it? Nah. What was the facts? I mean, what do you think was the fact? That's the, that's the same bullshit. But because we on Instagram, everybody got a voice, 8,000 comments and some dumb shit. Y'all niggas is playing with real lives. Y'all are playing with real life money. Y'all are playing with real life families, all for a like and a comment. And half of you media outlets is going to see this because we all follow each other. I know what it's hitting for, but won't dare to speak up because you don't really have an answer. Because as a media outlet, as a journalist, as a hip-hop connoisseur, whatever you want to call yourself, even if you're somebody who just talks about the culture, half of the shit that y'all talk about, y'all don't even really know. Y'all website, y'all platform, y'all IG is full of speculation. It's disgusting. That's not what this culture was really brought up on. We used to actually talk about things when we got a fact. Fact check sometimes. It's disgusting. You know what I mean? Like, eh. you got to make chess moves out here. Some of you guys is, yo, bro, I see you over there with this person and that person. Yo, you got to be over here with this. Let me tell you something, man. All that shit is bullshit. It's all bullshit. You know it's bullshit. The reality is, is that in life, relationships can't be black and white. Because no matter how you cut it, some way down the line, it's going to turn like politics. We all, we all don't like all the things that Trump does, but I guarantee you that if we wrote down every single thing that a Republican does, we'd find one thing that Republicans do that we would like. And as a Democrat, we'd look down the list of Democrats and find one thing as a Democrat we don't like. But what happens is, is that it's like forcing to pick left or right. So some of us just go this way. On that exact same point, if I'm friends with person A, person A, this is my boy, my boy. Person A is lit. What's up, my boy? It was love. He chilling over here. He chilling. Okay, cool. I'm friends with person B. What's good? Yo, person B. Yo, so you know person A dapped this guy over here that I didn't like or word? But person A is my man. Was it really violation? I mean, look, I don't know. It's making it look funny. Well, look, you and him just try to stay out your way, but it's still love. Y'all my friends. That would be the right way to do it, right? But wrong. 
Some of us get very emotional in a point and you start getting scared. When you start getting scared and you start being fearful, you start to feel like, yo, I got to pick a side. I need people with me. Yo, don't leave me here. Yo, bro, come on, you know. Remember, I'm your friend more. Come with me. Yo, stay over here. And now you start scattering. Fear starts kicking in. You start getting nervous. So you start moving erratically. To do what? To comfort the fear. To make you feel less scared. Like, yo, it's here, we good. When in reality, everybody can still just be cool. Because unless someone's doing direct harm to one another or legitimately supporting someone do harm, we got to just let it go. Because no matter what this shit is, it's too many people in this world, too many human beings in this very world for us to literally just move flawlessly where someone doesn't do something that we don't like or isn't around someone that we don't like. We can't hold everybody up to the same crucifix. How? It'd be impossible. Nobody would be friends with nobody. And then what happens is you start looking exposed because you'd have to pick sides with someone that in reality... Already chose sides with some. You know, it's too messy. Let everybody do what they do. Work on yourself. Focus on your immediate team. Make your immediate team four, five, six people that you know that all of y'all would pick all the same boxes on what you're doing. And just worry about that. And everybody else, that'll be your second degree friends. And you can't control your second degree friends. You can't. But just try to pick them wisely. And then your third degree and fourth and so on and so on and so on. And that way... We won't have opportunities to look at one another as weak individuals or look at people as like if they're moving fearful with their alliances. It's simple, though. Just a little food for thought, a little something I see. So many people tapped on this in so many different ways. It's cool. We all know what's up. You know what I mean? I wish that as a culture we'd understand that there's so much more important things to unify for than to separate for. You know what I mean? Nobody on earth could give me more reasons why we shouldn't be all linked together than why we should. I'd, I'd, I'd beat any one of you guys. If anybody had a list of, nah, this is why we shouldn't be cool, I'd have 50,000 more reasons why we should. I just look at things, maybe I look at things like a glass half full. I'm not into the glass half empty kind of guy. That's not really me. Um... Some of you guys and some of you people and listeners, they go through identity crisis. They don't really know where they want to go, what they want to be. And I think that the reality where it comes from is they don't really know who they want to look like. And I'm not just talking about physicality. I'm talking about a lot more on a deeper level. They don't know who they want to emulate their path and their journey towards. Because in reality, this is all about our path and journey to happiness and success. Because in life, the only true success in life, the only, life's entire purpose of success is a very important thing. The truth hurts. Being successful in life is only gauged against one thing and one thing alone, and that's personal happiness. If you are not personally happy, then you can't claim success because you didn't successfully complete what you wanted. You know, some people think success is money, and we all know millionaires that kill themselves, and some people think success is love, and we all know people who be in a room full of, uh, of friends and still feel alone. Success has to be personal happiness. That means for that woman that got a job in teaching pre-K, and she's a genius, she could build a rocket ship, but teaching those kids make her happy, that is a successful woman. For that photographer out there that literally will be like, yo, I could take pictures of all the, all the Insta nudes, you know what I mean? And, but he'd rather take pictures of a garden and a flower and of land and the sky because that just makes him happy. Be clear. That's a successful photographer. Don't lose yourself, people. Don't lose yourself chasing things that isn't pure happiness. We'll chase things that once we get it, it doesn't mean anything. 
So many of us work so hard to get a material. But the material isn't really what we want. I'm going to tell you something so twisted. One of my young guys, you know, like a little brother of mine, he goes so hard. He works all the time. He's always at work. He's always doing his thing. He goes so hard. He's like, yo, bro, I want these shoes. He want one of these zero shoes. And I'm like, all right, cool. Do your thing, bro. This is what you like. Go buy yourself one of those space shoes. Nigga, I love it. Go do it. And he bought these shoes. And I was like, oh, you lit, bro. You lit. You got them. And he looked me in the eye and said, nah, this ain't even it, bro. Now I'm going to hit the club and I'm going to go get this girl. And I go, you lost me. So you worked 30, 40 hours extra to get these shoes, but you didn't want the shoes. You wanted the girl. So you were chasing the wrong thing. Because in reality, you would have found way more happiness if you would have got that girl without that piece of material. If you would have been able to find happiness without that material, nothing would have beat that emotion. But when there's a woman out there that you know that you got because you looked a certain way, you'll never feel comfortable. I hate to isolate these people. I hate to isolate them. But at the end of the day, there's people like Trey Songz. There's people like Chris Brown, Puff. You know, these guys got a lot of money, man. You can't play material match with them. They're going to outshine real quick. So you always got to think about certain things when, with what you're going towards in life. Let's, be, let's really be real. There's NBA guys, NFL players, there's rappers, and we all know we really can't compete with that level of paper. So in reality, how insecure mentally do, does a person have to really be to feel that that item or that material is really the source of happiness? We've done so many moments to where that, that material becomes the blur and the focus of what happiness really is about. And we get lost let's really think about that for a moment. If you went and you got yourself the baddest joint right there, that's it. You got yourself the baddest joint. She lit, right? Oh, man. Popping. And you was like, yeah, man, once I got these shoes, it's lit. And then you see Future with them shoes on the next day in a different color that you couldn't even imagine with the shirt and the hat to match, the scarf and his bag, got the, you know, that kind of shit. You really think you're keeping that girl? We don't got to answer that, do we? We skip ahead. Find what's the true happiness of what you're seeking. Don't allow things to come in front of it. You know what I mean? If my goal is right here, I know what his goal is. I see it. It's my goal. Whatever happens over here is only a distraction to the goal. But so many times we stop here. Oh, shit, this is dope. Oh, yeah, little, little. But this is still the goal. Keep your eye on the prize. So simple, but we all say it. Figure out really, like, like sometimes, really look at what, it really is about. Is it about family? Is it about having kids? So many women, Valentine's Day is approaching, and I hate to isolate my women because I love y'all dearly, but so many women treat this holiday like it's like, that's it, it's the world, like Jesus Christ. Valentine's Day is here, oh my God, nobody loves me, nobody wants me. They let this day fuck them, <laughs> like harder than the guy if he was around. <laughs> but what is this day really about? Is it about to have a guy to spend time with? Is it about to have a partner to make you feel special? Or is this day about making other people feel insignificant because you got something? You know, the post-up girls. Oh, my God, look what I got. Oh, my God, look, 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 look. <laughs> we all know those girls, man. You know, they're excited to have a partner, girls. I get it. All good, baby. Celebrate your relationship. One of the biggest slaps in the face is reality. Reality, guys. Reality hurts, stings like a motherfucker. Reality and delusion, I think, are people's biggest issues. On Instagram, we all look, we all follow, we see these people with their illusion. Yo, this girl is stunning. She looks so bad. Oh my God, look at her picture. She looks perfect. It's all cool. We've seen these girls. A lot of times, some of y'all has even seen some of these girls and didn't notice them because they don't really look like how they look on Instagram. I don't know if you knew. It's not really real. It's angles to the shit. You heard fab. What's more important? 
Is it the fact that they can pull the cloak over your head and make you believe what you see is the reality? Or is it the reality itself? See, I guess the counter to that is just being authentic. Posting up, you know, regular stuff without a makeup, without shape up, you know what I mean, without your hair done. I guess that would be the normal. That would be reality, right? But then that's not real either way. Because even the poorest and the most humble all love to get seen in their best light. So should we really always be picking at the people that take the best pictures and they do dope things and they are focused on this? I think my whole point of what I'm saying is why the fuck do we care so much about who's fronting for the gram and who's not? We all know what's happening. We all know. You know what I mean? I, I, I wish that there was a challenge. Challenge, show your real life. Show us your car. Don't show us the logo on the wheel because that doesn't mean too much. Because out here, like they had the meme the other day, 10-year-old foreigns is not a foreign no more. It's a citizen. You know? Applaud you niggas. You know what I mean? Like, you know, some of you guys out here is doing a lot. You know what I mean? Like, I get it, but you're going to post up. You know what I mean? That logo on that reel real quick. I appreciate it. You know, some of you girls, you know, they always, you know, doing their thing, singing song. Oh, my God, Drake, 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 right? It's amazing. Like, okay, you never touch the wheel, which means you're in a shotgun. But if you're in a shotgun, that means someone else is in the car. Why hasn't that camera panned? Oh, you can't show him. I, I get it. Okay. Okay, cool. So you're in a car by yourself in a shotgun. No one's driving the car. I get it. You know, we could all laugh and poke at all of these things that's going on in the game. We can all do it. But my point that I want to bring up is why the fuck are we so consumed by it? So the fuck what if Tina's fake and if Tom is fronting and if Jim got fake jewels and if Tanya is a hoe and if this nigga does this, who the fuck cares? The question is, you do. The only way to answer that is to figure out why. Why is it that you want to look at people's lives so much that you want to make a comment on it? I'm going to tell you why. You're scared that you're doing the wrong thing. You're scared that on your journey, you're not doing it right. So instead of continuing to look right here, you do this. I wonder what they're doing over there. Oh, shit, what's up? What's going on on that test over there? Oh, shit, what'd you write, bro? Because you're not confident. You don't believe in where you're going. I couldn't tell you the last time I really started watching someone's progress. Like, honestly, like one of my counterparts, I can't. I, can't, I really can't tell you. I pay attention. I'm not ignorant to it. But to, like, really on some watch face, watch mine type, <laughs> we all know, like, I'm not into it. I'm so confident in what I'm going to do. I'm so confident in who I'm going to be. There's days where people are like, yo, you about to be Kanye. I know you write for so much people. I know, I, look at this. All the stuff you used to be with was the biggest shit. When you step away, it don't matter no more. We see it. I could talk like that. Because those artists won't speak up the same way. Shots. They say, punch, you're going to be like Puff. You're going to start putting niggas on. I want to do that. I want to EP niggas projects. I want to get artists under the wing. I want to put on for the city. See, punch, you like Khaled. You about to be that DJ. Yeah, I, in fact, I want all that. I want all that. I want to be Ye. I want to be Puff. I want to be Khaled. I want to be whole. I, don't give, I want all that. Because all of that just means that I want to be close to greatness. I'll take all of that. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to take all of that and continue to look this way. Because what's going on here and what's going on there doesn't change that I'm looking this way. Y'all want advice? Start learning how not to turn your heads. Start learning that what they're doing over there doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is what you do in this way. People, the truth hurts. You could stare, you could look, you could study, you could follow, you can duplicate. But what works for some doesn't work for all. 
You already know what it is, man. It's that boy Punch. True First Podcast, episode four. I talk my talk. I know what it is. Artists. I'm sorry. It's a million of you niggas. <laughs> I try to get to all of y'all. I listen to music in the day. Sometimes it's the afternoon. Sometimes it's the night. I try. That's the DJ in me. I'm trying to listen to everything you send. Business entrepreneurs. I try to read every email. It is overwhelming. Because these artists don't stay out of the fucking email. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, everything. Labels. People who want consultations. I'm perfecting my system and how I'm going to go through that. All of the people, yo, bro, I got money for you. I appreciate you, bro, because time is money. Time is money, and I appreciate when y'all come in there offering money. But I still got to find the time. Because money, although very useful on my path, that's not the core of my success. And that's happiness. And in my happiness, I got to create. I got to do music. I want to write music. I want to chill with my fam. I want to chill with my friends. I want to chill with the people I love. That's really what I want to focus on. Okay? So at the end of the day, just give me time. I'm human. I'm growing. I'm dealing with all of this fame. I'm dealing with the celebrity that I'm becoming. I'm dealing with everything that's happening in the best way that I know how. Give me time. If you see me, don't be mad to remind me. If, you, if, I, if you're not an answer a DM, shoot another one. I'm not being on no ignorant shit. It's just so much to deal with. I will get to everybody as fast as I can. I love y'all, and this is it. We're not going to do the disappearing act no more. It's back. It's punch. Mr. Brooklyn everywhere. Mr. You know, I don't even know what the hell they call me. Mr. See me with that same energy. And Mr. Last time I checked, man, I'm outside, man. Where are you?